GNOME and Ubuntu have a relatively close relationship. It is not a surprise that Ubuntu does two releases a year, one in April, one in October. This is done to coincide with the new GNOME releases. It is the exact same reason that Fedora does it as well. But that's not all their relationship entails. So recently, this email was released on the Ubuntu releases mailing list. Mutter slash GNOME shell are no longer covered by the GNOME MRE. It has been brought to the SRU's attention, that being the stable release update team's attention, that Mutter has landed a significant new feature in the 46.1 point release, that being the explicit sync support needed to basically make NVIDIA GPUs on Wayland not suck. Assuming you have the new NVIDIA drivers as well, it will stop the flickering, which is good, right? Everybody agrees. Having that flicker gone is a good thing. The GNOME micro-release exception policy historically exists on the basis that the GNOME release and testing process broadly matches SRU policy, so duplicating that process by performing a full SRU review on GNOME point releases would be unnecessary work. Since Mata no longer appears to have the same understanding of that process as we do, Mata SRUs will not be covered by the GNOME MRE going forward. Mata and GNOME shell point releases may still be acceptable under the normal micro-release process. This can be checked on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, but what does that actually mean for GNOME and Ubuntu? First question, what is a GNOME MRE? We're not talking about military rations here. This is the GNOME micro-release exception policy. But what is a micro-release exception policy? Well, this is actually an outdated process that Ubuntu doesn't really use on that many things anymore. The only things that still use it have been grandfathered into the system. What we have now is the stable release updates policy, and this is basically the set of guidelines for how they bring updates into a stable release. So if you're using something like 24.04 LTS, the current version of Ubuntu, this is an LTS release. But even though it's an LTS release, this doesn't mean that it's not getting updates. It's only getting very specific updates. And generally this refers to fixing bugs or security issues and things of that nature. It's not about adding in additional functionality. But there are certain things out there which don't fit into their normal set of guidelines. Things which release in a weird way where they need to have a special case exception. Things like the Linux kernel, for example, which do not align at all with the way that Ubuntu wants to release. But another good example of this is going to be GNOME. GNOME has a micro-release exception, accepting it from the normal QA requirements of the micro-release policy, as documented here. This was granted by the technical board on June 22nd, 2012. And this right here is the policy itself. Now, if I'm being completely honest, this documentation is one of the less well-written policy exceptions. Look at something like the kernel exception policy, clear headings, clear layout, and you know exactly what this is doing and what it implies. It explicitly says, since the granting of micro-release exceptions was made more generic and then decisions delegated to the SRU team directly, the documentation of this exception was removed. However, GNOME does not meet the new generic terms of the QA requirement, that being quality assurance. The policy requires a TB exception technical board. Since this was granted previously, including the consideration of QA, we can treat this as grandfathered. So they still have the policy attached to it, but the explanation of like all that's going on is just who needs it anymore? Therefore, GNOME has a micro-release exception as follows, which applies regardless of the additional QA requirements in the current general MRE policy. GNOME, only the core modules and apps, not the entirety of what is hosted on GNOME.org. GNOME provides a list of what they consider core as a part of the release. This list can be found at this right here, depending on the specific version. Along with this, Ubuntu adds some additional applications they include as part of the policy. Evolution, Evolution EWS, 
Fire Roller, Get It, Gnome Terminal, Gnome Tweaks, Seahorse, and everything the Gnome Games app package directly depends on. As an exception to the Gnome provided list, Vala is not covered by this MRE. Relevant bug fixes to Vala are rare and require special handling. So all of these applications here, anything under this explanation is covered by the policy. What this all means is when GNOME has a new micro-release, for example the recently released 46.1, normally packages on Ubuntu, when they are shipped on a point release, go through the stable release updates policy for doing their QA and for doing their testing. This is relatively rigorous to make sure they're only addressing the things that they want to address and no regressions are brought into that release. This does not apply to GNOME and this specific list of packages that they want to say are part of GNOME. There is still QA and there is still testing, but it is considerably less rigorous. Now, the problem is this system is only supposed to be used for bug fixes and security fixes. It is not supposed to be used to introduce a new major feature to the project in a point release, a new major feature like Explicit Sync is. What does this actually mean for GNOME and Ubuntu? So the current release of Ubuntu is 24.04 LTS. This is shipping GNOME 46. And in a normal situation, by now or in the relatively near future, 46.1, the point release, would be available. But 46.1 has this major new feature, so at least from the perspective of the Ubuntu Stable Release Updates team, Mutter and Ubuntu no longer have the same understanding of the process being used here. This puts Ubuntu 24.04 in a really weird situation where they have a few different choices they can make here. They can move up to 46.1, but explicitly cherry pick out the explicit sync patches, so they still basically just have the bug fixes and the rest of it, but not this major new feature. They could decide to just never ship 46.1 on 24.04 LTS, which by extension means they wouldn't ship any future versions after that because 46.2 would have all the features that 46.1 have along with the additional changes they make in that version. They could try to convince the GNOME project to maybe pull those patches out of 46.1 and then wait until the GNOME 47 release and then reship them then. Or there is just the possibility of the final option, which is what it says at the bottom here. Mutter and Gnome Shell point releases may still be acceptable under the normal micro-release process. This can be checked on a case-by-case -case basis. So even though it does break this sort of exception they have, they could just say, you know, let's just do it anyway because of how important Gnome is to our release here. Now, considering what I've said in the past, you might think I'm going to say that GNOME's done something wrong here, that they should pull the patches and they should make it so it fits with the Ubuntu release model, but I don't think GNOME's done anything wrong here. Much like KDE, GNOME's releases are actually time-based. Their point releases don't actually have any guarantees that it's just going to be bug fixes, that it's just going to be security fixes. Whatever happens to be ready, reviewed, tested, and then approved prior to the point release window, which they feel like belongs in that point release, actually just ends up being dumped into the new release. This is often why you'll see experimental features that are available, but hidden behind a experimental toggle in G settings. They're kind of ready, but they're still being tested and they just want to get them out there. But they don't have an explicit set of this is exactly what we're going to have available in this next release. It's basically just whatever's there is there. I'm not aware if there have been any serious long form discussions about this, but I know there are some GNOME team members who would be willing to change up to a different model that makes the point releases actually clearly point releases, not just 
release because it's hit a time window. For example, here is a message on the 45.1 release made by Michael Catanzaro of the release team. It probably would be a good time for shell slash mudder releases to be based on the quantity of fixes that have cropped up. But yes, the GNOME releases are time-based and simply include the latest versions of whatever components decided to release before the deadlines. This is in many ways similar to what the Linux kernel does. Basically, they don't have like as clear of a schedule like GNOME does where every single point is deadlined out, but with the Linux kernel, basically a new release happens when Linus feels like there's enough patches that have been added. What does enough mean? whatever Linus feels like that time. Now, explicit sync is a weird one when it comes to being a big feature because yes, it's technically a big feature, but it's a feature whose main purpose for existing is fixing a bug. So it's still a bug fix in a sense, right? But it's a bug fix because of a new protocol being added. And if you're an NVIDIA user, if you want to use the Wayland side of GNOME, it's basically a requirement for some people. Being a race condition, some people don't experience the problem, but for the people who do, the flickering that happens without explicit sync and the 555 drivers is not pleasant, especially if you are photosensitive. So I guess if you're an Ubuntu user, wait and see what happens because... It's possible 24.04 is just going to be in a really weird position as an LTS. And look, just wait till 24.10 and the problem's not going to matter anyway. But let me know your thoughts. Do you think this matters whatsoever? Do you think this is going to be a problem for those who do like to stick with the LTS releases? Or do you think that if you do want something like this, what do you do on an LTS? Just get on something that moves a little bit quicker, like Fedora, for example. I'd like to know your thoughts down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, so the pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and use NixOS. That's where we're going to end it.